It was the deadliest accident in the history of the garment industry. More than 1,100 people were killed when the Rana Plaza clothing factory near Dhaka, Bangladesh collapsed. Ashik helped to recover some of the victims' bodies. He's a textile worker and has been fighting for better working conditions. After he took to the streets to demand better pay, he was arrested and jailed. But he didn't give up. On the fourth anniversary of the disaster, Ashik and his colleagues organized a demonstration. It's time for the afternoon meal. It's the only food that Ashik, his wife Rahinur, and their son will have today. They've been living for weeks on rice and a little curry. Bring me some more cloth to put on the fire. The wood's wet. I've got to dry it out, so I need that cloth. Come on, Rahinur, move it. I'm going as fast as I can. Ashik and Rahinur used to make a modest living as tailors, but now money is tight. They've been out of work since they took part in a protest four months ago. I don't know what to do. We can't pay the rent, and we can't get credit from the food shops because I'm a month behind on my bills. I've already sold the refrigerator and the TV. I have no idea how I'm going to raise more cash. Before the meal, Ashik's son Himel cleans the plates. Himel suffers from a kidney ailment, but his parents can't afford medical treatment for him. They don't even have the money to send him to school. Where are you, son? She's calling his husband, Himil. Please come, take you. Yeah. We always have to call you. Sit down and eat. I don't want to. You have to eat something. I want a mango. We don't have any. I want a mango. Just have some rice. The workers' demonstration took place in December. Shortly afterward, the police came to Ashik's home one night and arrested him. He was one of the union members who organized the protest. He was held in jail for two months. I'm afraid of the police. I didn't break any laws, but they arrested me anyway. I don't have any money, but the factory owners are rich, and they can afford to bribe the police. Every night I worry that they'll come here again and pack me off to jail. The police told me to keep quiet about the arrest. They said if I didn't, things would go worse for my husband. Ashik and Rahinur are on their way to meet some former colleagues who live in their neighborhood. Just about everyone who lives here works in the factories. They're planning a new demonstration to remember the Rana Plaza disaster four years ago and to demand better pay. The owners are making big profits, and we can't even make ends meet. The pay is low and the working conditions are bad. The owners are getting rich at our expense. But the fashion chains don't want to pay more for clothes. If the owners raise our pay, the chains will go somewhere else, and the factories will close. We can't start this protest yet. We're still scared. The workers are worried that they'll be fired. I am too. But we've got to get over this fear and get organized. Otherwise, nothing will happen. 
All the workers have to join us and get out onto the streets. It's no wonder these people are demanding better working conditions. Ashik used to work up to 16 hours a day, often without a break, and six days a week on top of that. 3.5 million people in Bangladesh work under similar conditions. The textile industry is the country's largest. It's also the most important part of the domestic economy. A few days later, Ashok and his friend Hussein go to the site of the Rana Plaza disaster to remember the victims. After the building collapsed, Ashok helped to pull victims from the rubble. This is where the building used to stand. It was actually built on a filled-in pond, so its structural integrity was compromised from the start. There's garbage all over the place. No one bothers to pick it up. The first two floors were pushed right into the ground. Right, and there are still bodies in there. They didn't get them all. Ashak remembers the stench of corpses. For weeks, he helped to remove dead bodies and move the injured to safety. Injured people in the ruins were screaming for water. It was awful. So we climbed through the rubble and brought them some. This hammer and sickle serves as a memorial for the dead workers. Ashak is meeting some of their relatives. They all knew that the building was in danger of collapsing even before it actually did. But the managers ordered the workers into the factory anyway. More than 1,100 people were killed. The relatives have come here today to pray for the victims. At the upcoming demonstration, Ashik wants to make sure that the family's stories are told. My son and his wife were killed. Four days later, they found her body, but they never found my son's body. I still can't deal with this. I pray every day for those who died. Not only for my son and his wife, I pray for all of them. Criminal charges have been filed against a number of people in connection with the Rana Plaza disaster, but the cases are tied up in court. They should be hanged, then we'll have some peace. Candles have been lit to remember the victims. Many here are worried that other buildings could collapse. The government has taken some measures to improve building safety, but those measures do not apply to all factories. I hope that'll change and that all buildings will be safe to work in. Those measures include setting up emergency exits, supplying factories with more fire extinguishers, and tougher checks on structural integrity. But that's happening mostly in the big factories. In smaller factories, many people are still working in dangerous conditions. The next morning, people start heading for the workers' demonstration, but fewer people than expected turn up. 
They're shouting, workers of the world unite and fight. That's based on the famous slogan that's found in the Communist Manifesto by Marx and Engels. But the factory owners have said that anyone who doesn't show up for work today will be sacked. I hope more people will turn out. But the police are all over the place, and it looks like rain. The police have already stopped some smaller marches. They've been deployed in all the streets around the plaza to keep things under control. A union leader is allowed to speak for just five minutes. The first thing we have to do is help the workers who were severely injured. They must finally receive financial compensation from the government so that they can start leading a decent life. The police have decided that enough is enough and announced that the demonstration is now officially over. We have to get help from the people who buy the clothes we make. They should put pressure on the companies to improve working conditions. But they should keep buying our clothes, because if they stop, things will just get worse. All the people who came here today took a big risk. They might have been arrested or fired from their jobs, but they came anyway to show their support for better pay and working conditions and to remember the people who died at Rana Plaza.